gurus say, every breakout is not viable. Were you aware that over 72% of all breakouts fail? No. Breakouts, every breakout is not created equal. But breakouts that occur at or near the 20 period moving average are the lovely breakouts. Those are the playable breakouts that pristine trained traders are taught to capitalize on. As you can see, at around 1400 hours or so, a breakout occurred. That breakout is a very powerful, viable breakout. Why? Because it's occurring at or near this rising 20 period moving average. How would the core trader manage the trade once he or she entered? Very simple. You should know this by now. The core trader would enter at breakout point, at the breakout point, and hold the stock as long as the stock remains above the 20 period moving average. Now, some people ask, well, Oliver, if I'm core trading a micro time frame and by the end of the day, if the stock has not broken below the 20 period moving average, should I hold the stock into the following day? Well, that's a personal choice. Most micro traders do not hold the stock into the next day. Most micro traders will sell right into the last few minutes of the trading day despite the fact that the stock has not violated the 20 period moving average. Why? Because the micro trader is simply looking for a relatively small profit for that particular day in that particular trade. However, um, it's a little more complex, but there are times when it can be appropriate to hold on into the next day. And of course, that's beyond the scope of today's talk, but I just wanted to mention that is an important point. So the core trader would buy at, breakout, at the breakout point and hold as long as the stock remains above the 20 period moving average. At the end of the day, the core trader would have to decide, do I sell out for and take my profit home? Or do I gamble a little bit and hold on to the, hold this stock into the, into the following day with the hope that the momentum that occurred late into to the day would spill over into the following day? It's a personal choice and it's up to you. Now, of course, the swing trader would sell differently, of course, right? The swing trader would buy at the same point, the same breakout point. Remember, the way that the core trader and the swing trader buys is identical. The way they sell is different. So the swing trader would buy at the breakout point and look to sell once the stock has experienced a multi-bar move away from the 20 period moving average. Now we get a lot of people who actually ask, ask and say, Oliver, well, what do you mean by a multi-bar move away? Is there a number or is there a reference point you can give me? Is there a number? No, in reality there is not. All right, Every stock is different. It's like every person is different. Each stock represents an individual person in the market. A, all we're looking for is a three to five bar move away from the 20 period moving average. And if that is the case, we, we move into swing trading sell mode. A three to far, five bar move away from the 20 is enough to sell for a swing. But remember, the pristine trained momentum trader is going to apply both styles. So the momentum trader is not overly concerned with whether or not they're selling a little too soon and missing out on potential additional profits. Why? Because one part of their position is being held for the long haul. The other part is being used to go in and out in typical swing trading fashion. One part is in there to grab the double, the triple, the home run. The other part is your hit and run lot. And by combining both core and swing, I'm gonna say this a hundred more times, by combining these styles, we believe that you as a, as a pristine trained momentum trader can therefore maximize the profitability in your trades and make the individual stock, the employee that you have hired, cough up every single dime it's willing to cough up. Here, I am showing an example of a two minute chart. Why? Because occasionally our traders are taught to go as low as a two minute chart. Now, remind you, I did say that the two dominant time frames of a micro trader is the 15 minute time frame and the five minute time frame. I'm going to be bold enough to say that more than 90% of your trading activity as a micro trader 
will be the result of focusing on the 15 minute time frame and the five minute time frame. There's approximately eight to 10% of the time that you might find opportunities on the two minute time frame when the, the opportunities in your 15 minute and your five minute time frame are just simply not coming frequently enough for your liking. In that case, in that scenario, it is appropriate to drop down to a two minute time frame and the same rules apply, mind you. The same moving averages are applicable. We need a 20 period moving average and a 200 period moving average. In order to be a buyer, we must find a stock that meets the following criteria or, or has in place the tenets of the following formula. We need a stock that is rising. We need a 20 period moving average of that stock also rising and we need that 20 period moving average to be rising above the 200 period moving average. This example shows it very clearly. We have not only is the stock rising, the 20 period moving average is rising in a very nice smooth manner. Look at that 20 period moving average is almost as if a plane is taking off at a 45 degree angle, the picture of beauty, right? That 20 period moving average is rising above the 200 period moving average. With that formula in place, we now have a right to risk our family's money. We now have a right to buy at or near the rising 20 period moving average. If this formula were not in place, this stock is not worthy of receiving our hard earned family money. All right? However, in this example, we have the formula in place. The 20 period moving average is rising. That 20 period moving average is rising above the 200 period moving average. Okay? Circle number one represents a breakout that is occurring at or near the rising 20 period moving average at about 14. Uh, 30 hours at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, okay? That is a buy opportunity, all right? The core trader would buy at circle number one and hold on as long as the stock remains above the 20-period 20, the 20 moving average. You know this by now. The swing trader would look to sell on the first multi-bar rally away from the 20-period moving average. You know by now that on this two-minute chart, you as a pristine trained momentum trader, is going to, you're, going, you're going to do both. You're going to buy at circle number one. Let's say you're going to buy 500 shares at circle number one at the breakout point at 1430. You are going to sell after, you're going to sell 250 or 300 shares or so after a multi-bar move away from the 20 period moving average. You are going to look to buy an additional 500 shares at circle number two, which is occurring around 1500 hours. All right? You now have, uh, you now have roughly 700 shares or so. All right, you're going to sell half of the 700 share lot, all right, 350 dollars, 350 shares or so, after a multi-bar run away from the 20 period moving average, and so forth and so on. You are going to keep this cycle going. You're going to keep pyramiding into the stock in this fashion as long as the 20 period moving average is rising and that stock is rising above the 20 period moving average and as long as that stock is delivering a, you know subsequent and additional buy opportunities by dipping back toward the rising 20 period moving average now mind you I have not begun to explain how and when you specifically buy we are still generically talking about buying in the area of the 20 period moving average but don't despair in the next section, we will start to delve into precisely when and where to the penny you are supposed to enter into your stock. We're going to also talk about how you place your protective stops in, in, in this process as well. The point here that you must understand is that the pristine trained momentum trader, all right, the pristine trained momentum trader combines both the core approach and the swing approach for maximum profitability. What are the general rules that we've covered so far? They are as follows. Let's go over a summary here. The buy rules are as follows. Number one, we only take trades in the direction of the 20 period simple moving average. What does that mean? You should know by now. If the 20 period moving average is rising, we as pristine trained traders, we're buyers. 
The only question is, when do we buy? All right, but we're buyers. If the 20 period moving average